Hey, what's up everybody and welcome back to another video on the Go programming language. So in this video, we're going to go over another object oriented programming concept, but this concept is also very useful in the Go programming language as well. Although the way that it's implemented in the Go programming language is a bit different from the way that it's implemented in an OOP language like Java or something like that. But the concept that we're going to be going over today is called polymorphism. Now, understanding polymorphism is really going to improve your ability to read Go code as well as write Go code. Because believe it or not, polymorphism in Go is used in many open source projects and production code. So being able to understand polymorphism is going to bring you one step closer to being more of an advanced Go developer. But before we get into the explanation, as usual, I want to mention that if you enjoy my style of teaching, I have a full course on microservice architectures using the Go programming language, which is linked in the description below. So if if that's something that you're interested in or you want to support me and what I do, then feel free to enroll in that course. And without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the explanation of polymorphism. All right, so I want you to imagine that you're part of the development team that works on some e-commerce site. And this site sells some products, so let's just put a couple of products here. We'll put a shirt here, a monitor, and a bottle of wine. And of course, all of these products have some associated price. And up here, we have our shopping cart. Now, we've all shopped on Amazon or whatever before, so you know the drill here. So we'd add items that we want to purchase to our cart. And when we want to check out, we'd go to the checkout page, right? And of course, when we get to the checkout page, our products will be there as well or the products that we've added to the cart and we'd have some cart total as well and the cart total might include like tax and shipping and all this other stuff right but i think you get the point this is a very common scenario for most of us so how does this translate to code well we can take all of these items here and in code they'd be represented as some object or structure with some characteristics right so all of these products are probably going to have some shared characteristics right like price and brand but each product is also going to have some characteristics specific to that product. So for example, maybe a shirt is going to have size and color, and maybe a monitor will have size and resolution, and maybe wine will have like the year of the wine and the type of wine. Now, like most things in the engineering world, things aren't always this simple. Like in the real world, there's always some edge case or there's always some business logic that needs to be implemented that throws a wrench in the simplicity of it all. So for example, the prices for these products might not be so simple, right? Like maybe there's some specific tax for alcohol, for example, and maybe there's some specific tax for electronics, like a recycling fee or something. And maybe clothes specifically are on sale for like 20% off or something. So in a scenario like this it won't be as simple as just getting the base price right we'd need to calculate those taxes or sales into the actual price and don't worry it's going to start off a bit confusing but it's all going to become clear soon so from the perspective of code, I want you to imagine these products as structs. So for example, in Go, it, it would look like this. It would say type and then shirt. And actually, since the price and brand are shared characteristics between all of the types, we can create a shared type for these product details that we can embed into each of these particular types here. So what I mean is we could have like type, product details and product details will have price and brand, right? So then in the shirt, we would just embed product details. Each of these products is going to look like this in code, right? We're gonna have a shirt struct, we're gonna have a monitor struct and a wine struct. And they're all going to embed product details because they all share price and brand. But like I mentioned before, price isn't necessarily going to be as simple as getting the base price for each product. So actually for each of these structs, we're going to need to create some method that allows us to get the price or calculate the price to include all of these taxes or whatever. So the shirt will have its own calculate price method and the same for the monitor and the same for the wine. And all of these methods are going to return an N64, which is the price. Now, like I mentioned before, depending on the product, the way the price is calculated might be different, right? Like maybe the wine has some alcohol tax. So for example, we take the price plus alcohol tax and that's what we would return for calculate price for the wine. But maybe for the monitor, 
here for the price we'd return price plus like recycling tax and then maybe for clothes there's some sale on clothing so we'll just return price minus the sale percentage or whatever so although all of these products have this calculate price method that returns an n64 the implementation for each method is different right but what if we want to calculate the cart total so what i mean is to calculate the cart total we need to get the result from each of these individual calculate price methods and we need to sum them all right but these are all different types so if we had some function calculate cart total and it takes in like the products that are in the cart the question becomes what type would these products be so for example we couldn't say products is shirts because then if we tried to pass in monitors to this calculate total method it wouldn't work and same for wine if type was shirts we couldn't pass in wine as a product here either and this is where polymorphism comes into play so go uses interfaces to do polymorphism essentially so what are we trying to achieve here so products or a product is polymorphic. That means that a product can occur in several different forms, right? So we have a shirt, which is a product. We have a monitor, which is a product. And we have wine, which is a product. But all of these products can occur in different forms. So a shirt is one form. A monitor is one form. Wine is one form. Maybe a car is another form. Anything that you can buy can be a product, right? So that's what I mean when I say the product is polymorphic. I'm just saying that the product can occur in several forms. So that means that we know that we can take some function like this with some static code that looks like this that will still work on different variations of product or different forms of product. And depending on the individual forms implementation of the shared behavior, we're going to get different output for that shared behavior. So anyways, here for products, we would create an interface. So we would say type and let's just call it purchasable because products are purchasable, right? Interface. And in order to satisfy this interface, a product just needs to implement calculate price, which returns an int 64. So now this isn't really a question anymore, right? The type for products is simply going to be the interface which is purchasable so now as long as these different forms of product implement the calculate price methods then they can be passed into this function here and we can add to the total the result of the calculate price for each individual product and that is polymorphism now the key thing to understand about polymorphism here is what i mentioned before so a product is polymorphic meaning it can occur in several forms and since a product can occur in several forms there might be different behavior depending on the form for some shared functionality so by using an interface here to define the contract between different forms of product, we're able to write some code that remains the same regardless of the product passed in. And that even applies to when individual products are changed. For example, say clothing, the sale is over. So we no longer want to discount some percentage when you purchase clothing. We want to just leave the price as is, the base price. If as developers, we need to make this change to the underlying implementation of calculate price, it doesn't matter from the perspective of this code. So we don't need to change anything in this code if we make changes to any of these implementations, right? Because as long as the implementation returns the expected in 64 this code doesn't care what's happening in calculate price right it's getting an n64 and adding it to the total we don't need to change anything here so polymorphism is about situations where something can occur in several different forms so a product can occur in several different forms and in go you can work with these different forms of a particular thing by making use of interfaces but anyways that is polymorphism so let's go ahead and get into a quick coding example all right, so getting right into this, we can go ahead and create our main.go file. And this will be package main, of course, and we'll just create the main function. And from there, we'll go ahead and create our individual products and we'll create them in different files in the same package, but in different files just to separate things and make it less confusing. So to start with, we're going to create the product description. So we'll do product desk.go and just like in the example we're going to create a type for product details which will include price and brand and once we have the product details struct we can embed that into the structs that we create for the other products so we'll go ahead and start with the t-shirt product or we'll just call it shirt 
and we'll create the type for shirt, which is going to embed product details. And then it's going to have its own individual attributes called size and color. And then we're going to create the calculate price implementation for shirt. And remember, this is the same thing we did in the example. This is the calculate price implementation that's going to need to exist to satisfy the interface that we'll create later on. And like I mentioned before in the example, we're going to have a discount for clothing. So we'll just create that discount by doing clothing discount and we're just going to calculate 20% of the original price. So we're going to do s dot price and price here is going to be the price that's from the embedded product details. So if we go to definition here, you see it takes us to product details price and that's because product details is embedded here so we can access it directly in the code here. So we're going to take the price and we're gonna just multiply it by 0.20 to get 20% of the price. And we actually need to convert this to a float 64. And this is going to give us 20% of the price. And then we're just going to return the price minus, and then we're gonna convert it back to N64, the clothing discount. So minus 20%. And that's going to be the code for shirt. And we're just gonna go ahead and copy all of this and we're gonna create a new file and that one's gonna be called monitor.go and we'll just paste it into here and we'll just change shirt to monitor and change this to M. And remember monitor two has its own individual characteristics which is it has size similar to shirt but it also has resolution and it still embeds product details and it still has calculate price, but instead of a clothing discount, we're going to do electronics tax, and it's gonna be 30%, and we need to change this to M, and this is gonna be electronics tax. And instead of subtracting it, we're gonna actually add it, because it's not a discount, it's a tax, and we'll change this to M as well. And that's gonna be the code for the monitor. And then we can go ahead and copy this code. And lastly, we'll create wine.go and we'll just paste that into there. And again, we'll change the name of this one to wine and wine's going to need, I think it was year and type. And it will also embed product details as usual. And actually let's say kind instead of type. And then we need to change this to wine and this to W. And now for wine, we're gonna do a liquor tax. So we'll change this to liquor tax and liquor tax will be uh, whatever, 23%. And we'll also throw in another tax. We'll just call it state liquor tax it's specific to the state. And this is just to throw in some additional complexity. And we'll just say that the state liquor tax is only 10%. And what we're gonna return is, we're gonna return the price plus the liquor tax plus the state liquor tax. And that's gonna be the implementation for wine. So finally, we can go back into main. And for starters in main, let's go ahead and just create the cart. So we'll do var cart. And we're just gonna say that it's a slice of purchasable. And actually we have to create the purchasable interface that I explained in the explanation at the beginning of the video as well. So let's just go up here and we'll do type purchasable interface. And just like in the example, we're gonna say that in order for a type to implement this interface, it needs to implement calculate price. And calculate price needs to return an int 64. So now we have the interface here and we have our cart here, which is a slice of purchasable. And we're gonna create a function called add to cart. And it's gonna be a variadic function and it's gonna take in products of purchasable. And it's simply going to append to our cart all of the products that are passed in. And lastly, what we need to create is the function to get the cart total. So we'll do func get cart total and we'll start with a var total in 64. And we're just gonna iterate through all of the products in our cart. Now this is a little bit different from the explanation because in the explanation in the get cart total function, we were passing in products of purchasable, right? And then we were ranging through products 
from within the function. But here we're not going to do it that way because we need to range through the items that we already add to the cart. So we created this add to cart function here, which is adding the products to this slice here, which is our cart. So instead of passing in purchasable products to the get cart total, we're just going to iterate through the purchasable products in the cart already. So that's the only difference here. So we'll just remove that and this is going to be cart but everything else is the same we're going to do total plus equals product dot calculate price and in the end we'll return the total and it's that simple so now down here in main we'll go ahead and create our products so we'll start with the shirt my shirt equals and it's going to be a shirt and the shirt embeds product details, right? So we're going to do product details and inside of product details, we'll have the price and the shirt will say is $50, but we're going to do it in cents. So it's 5,000 cents and the brand we'll just say is Nike. Now that's just the product details, but inside of the shirt, we need to have the size. So we'll say XL and the color. So we'll say blue. So that's the shirt and let's just copy this and do my monitor. This one's going to be a monitor, which will also have product details, but the price of a monitor is going to be $300. So 30,000 cents and the brand will just say LG and the size will say 32 inch and resolution will say 4k. And lastly, we'll do my wine, which will be wine. And the wine is going to be $150 or 15,000 cents. And brand, we'll just say Kirkland. And for the year of the wine, it's year 2000 wine. And I don't know about types of wine, so I'll just say red. And then we're going to just add all of these products to cart. So we'll do add to cart, my shirt, my monitor, and my wine. And all that's left to do now is to just get cart total. And we can go ahead and print that. And that is our code. So now let's go ahead and run this program. So we'll just pop open a terminal here and we'll ls. So you'll see we have all of these files we created in the directory and we'll do go mod in it. And we're gonna call it polymorphism and we'll do go mod tidy. And then we can just do go run. And as you can see here, we get the cart total, which is 62,950 or a little over $620. So if we added these prices without the taxes, we'd get $500. And then the other 120 plus dollars is from the taxes, etc., And also the discount for the clothes. And really quick, we can go here to shirt and we can actually remove the discount like I mentioned in the example. And then we can just go ahead and go run this again. And you can see now without the discount for the shirt, we're needing to pay a little bit more. And that is polymorphism. The product is polymorphic because it can occur in several different forms. The different forms being shirt, wine, and monitor in this case. But anyways, that's going to be it for this video. If this video was helpful, don't forget to leave a like. And if you want to see more content like this, feel free to subscribe to the channel and I'll see you in the next one.